Hello all, welcome back to FED Learning. In this video, we will explore the next fundamental concept in Angular called directives, which play an essential role in creating robust, scalable and maintainable applications. So first, let's understand what are directives. Directives in Angular are reusable code blocks that extend the capabilities of standard HTML views. And directives are classes that add custom behavior to elements in Angular applications. So by using Angular's built-in directives, we can efficiently manage forms, list, styles, and we can control the user interface. So how many types of directives are available in Angular? There are three types of directives available in Angular. First, component directive, second, structural directive, and third, attribute directive. Let's understand what component directive is. Component directive defines Angular components, which are the building blocks of an Angular application. And this is the most common type of directive in Angular. The primary purpose of a component is to break down an application into smaller parts. And in Angular, we can create components using the command ng-generate-component-component-name. So here, inside Visual Studio Code, to save time, I have already created a component with name directives and to render this component on the web, I have imported the directives component in the imports array of app component and added the selector of the directive component in the app component HTML file. Inside directives.component.ts file, above this directives component class, we can find the at the rate component decorator, which is also known as component directive and the object passed to that component directive is called the component's metadata, which include selector, imports, template URL, style URL, and more. Therefore, every component in Angular must have the TypeScript class with behaviors such as handling user input and fetching data from a server. Next, an HTML template that controls what renders into the DOM. And third, a CSS selector that defines how the component is used in HTML. And from Angular version 19, by default, Angular components are standalone, eliminating the need to add standalone property in the add the rate component decorator, or we can say component directive. And to use standalone component directives or pipes, we must add it in the imports array in the component directive here. For example, if you want to use the structural ng if directive, then you need to add it inside this imports directive. It is ng if. Then only you can make use of ng if directive in the directives.component.html file. Similarly, we have already created a data binding component while learning data binding concepts. So if you want to use the data binding component in this directive component, then you must import the data binding component in the imports array of this directive component like this. Okay, so as Angular is a component based architecture, components play a vital role. Therefore, it is challenging to work in Angular without the component directive. So I hope you now understand the importance of component directive in Angular. Now, let's move on to the second type of directive, structural directive. This directive modify the structure of the DOM. DOM means document object model. And this structural directive can alter the behavior of elements, components, and other directives. Examples of structural directives include star ng if is used to display or remove an element based on a Boolean condition. Next example, star ng for is used to iterate over a list and generate new DOM elements for each atom. Next example is star ng switch, used to add or remove DOM elements based on the value of a switch expression. And if you are dealing with multiple conditions, then ng switch is an alternative to using multiple nested ng if statements. So basically, we can use ng if to show and hide data, ng for to iterate over data, and ng switch to add or remove DOM elements. And for better understanding, we will explore these directives with different scenarios through practical examples. First, I'm covering the theory part so that you can easily answer questions about directives in an interview. Since directives are a fundamental concept, 
So around 90% of interviewers will ask about directives. Additionally, it's important to note that these three structural directives are mandatory in Angular projects version 16 and below. And this is because Angular 17 has introduced new built-in control flow statements that serve as alternatives to these three structural directives, which we will explore later. Therefore, as an Angular developer, it's important to be familiar with all directives, especially since many companies still maintain projects on version prior to 17. In such cases, structural directives are the only way to modify the DOM layout. Now, let's talk on third type of directive, attribute directive. And this type of directive alter the behavior of an element by adding, removing or modifying its attributes. Unlike structural directives, they do not change the DOM layout by adding or removing elements. Just to recap, structural directives modify the structure of the DOM while attribute directives modify its attributes. And as we learned earlier in property binding, an attribute refers to the properties of an HTML element such as ID, name, value, SRC, etc. which we wrap in square brackets. So we can modify these properties using attribute directives. And examples of attribute directives include ng class, this directive is used to add or remove CSS classes from an element. And second example of attribute directive is ng-style. This directive is used to add or remove inline styles from an element. And third example is ng-model. This directive is used to add two-way data binding to an HTML form element. And we have already covered this ng-model concept earlier while learning about two-way data binding. Okay, so, so far we have understood what directives are. I repeat, directives are used to add additional behavior to elements in your Angular applications. And there are three types of directives. First, component directive used to specify Angular components. Second, structural directive. They change the structure of a DOM. And third, attribute directive. They change behavior by modifying attributes. So we have covered the theoretical aspects of directives and now we can explore the practical usage of each directive with examples. But before we do that, first we will install Bootstrap in our Angular 19 application. So quickly, we will install Bootstrap. So what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap is a free and open source front-end development framework for creating dynamic website layouts and web applications. And why do we use Bootstrap? We use Bootstrap to speed up development and avoid coding from scratch. Okay, so let's see what steps are required to install a Bootstrap framework. We need to follow two steps in order to install Bootstrap in Angular application. First step is to use npm command, and second step is to add the CSS and JavaScript file paths inside Angular.json file. So, as per the first step, I'll use the npm command to install Bootstrap that is npm install bootstrap hit enter now once the installation is complete the bootstrap package will be added to the node modules folder let me open node modules inside node modules here you can see the bootstrap folder inside bootstrap there is this javascript and scss folder inside this folder we can find two folder CSS and JavaScript. And inside this folder, we can find the min.css and min.js file. That path we need to paste inside angular.json file. Okay, so that is our second step. Before that, we can also see the version of bootstrap inside package.json file. Here, let me search bootstrap. And here you can see the version of bootstrap is 5.3.3. Now let's complete our second step is to add bootstrap min.css and bootstrap min.js files path inside angular.json file. So here, inside the styles and scripts array, let me copy and paste the required path. So this path is for CSS. So we need to add inside styles array. And next, let me copy the JavaScript path and paste this inside scripts array. Now, 
save the changes and let's use a bootstrap button to test if bootstrap is installed successfully so here inside div let me add one button with class btn and btn primary which means i want to render blue color button on the browser save the changes and let me open browser and as unexpected we cannot see the blue colored button on the browser because i missed one important step that is after installing any new packages or dependencies it's important to restart the application and to do this we need to stop the current server and restart it using command ngs okay now let me jump into the browser till we cannot see the blue colored oh that's my mistake it's btn not brt now save the changes and finally we can see the blue colored button on the browser let me add one more class that is margin fiu and let me add one more button success and success means green color now save the changes and go back to browser here you can see we have successfully rendered two bootstrap buttons on the browser one is in blue color and one is in green color okay it means by following two steps like one step is to install npm with command npm install bootstrap and second step is to add these two file paths inside angular.json file and by following these two steps we have successfully integrated bootstrap in our angular 19 application and with this i will stop this video here and in the next video we will explore practical examples of built in structural directives i hope you enjoyed this video if yes kindly share your feedback in the description below thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to fed learning for quick and easy learning thank you bye bye